The events of May and June in, in France in 1968 were really a world event in that they certainly shook the, um, the whole of the ruling class of Europe and beyond, also the rulers in the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe at the time. Later came Czechoslovakia when they were able to put down the revolt with tanks. But um, it's really true to say it's not only Sarkozy who wants to eliminate the memory or the spirit of 68, but many other ruling classes. And even in Portugal it's been cited as we don't want another 68. You know, they're worried, the government, so-called socialist government of Portugal. But um, there were also many other events taking place in 1968 around the world. Again, uh, this is not about that, maybe some of the other discussions are. But uh, practically everyone who had any kind of political consciousness and who was young was against the Vietnam War. There was the Tet Offensive, which is a failure as far as the... Um, as far as the, it didn't beat um, the US imperialists out of Vietnam, but it was a turning point. But uh, also another effect on the US government was the massive demonstrations against the Vietnam War. And I sort of looking around the room, I think there's some comrades here who probably were with me uh, in Grosvenor Square in March of 1968. Yes. Um, and also in October of 1968, when there were 100,000 people there, there were very big uh, police forces, etc. We can't go into reminiscing about that because this is about France. But I think there are some, probably some other comrades here, a little bit younger, who've been, and those of us who are older, who've been on the anti-Iraq demonstrations, and to really see that um, the U.S. is again uh, bogged down in the mire of a very unpopular war that it cannot win. We also have the Democratic Convention coming up. 40 years ago, there were the anti-Vietnam demonstrations which were battered by, the, by Mayor Daly's police. You had the Me events in Mexico. Uh, come back to France, I better stick to France because there's only uh, perhaps 10, uh, 10 minutes. And um, the, the book which um, I had the privilege of being the author of, if you like, because it meant that I was able to do a lot of research and, um, again, go over the events. But it was written 20 years ago, already 20 years ago, and um, a lot of things have changed in the world since, since then, uh, especially the collapse of the Berlin Wall, the collapse of the, um, of the Stalinist state-owned planned economies. And uh, we are in a very different situation. Um, many, you know, the leaders of the, what used to be workers' parties, decided, concluded, there's no alternative to capitalism. But in 68, everybody felt, well, the only alternative to capitalism is socialism. We can disagree on how to get there. We can disagree on what kind of socialism. But that is really an alternative. In Britain, there was, um, a resolution at the Labour Party conference, when the Labour Party was the Workers' Party um, and was you know, participated in by a lot of workers, there was a resolution with three million uh, votes in support, which uh, was for the nationalisation of the major monopolies, which I think were 300 then, and quite rapidly it went to 250, then it went down to even less now, as we see. But it went through the Labour Party conference, there was a lot of discussion, a ferment in society, even though actually, if you looked at the election results last week for the local elections, there were many comments that they were the worst since, they were the worst for 40 years, which is way back in 1968. Um, Labour, the Labour government did very badly in the local elections, but it sort of prepared the new revolts on the part of the workers and on the part of the youth. But one of the big questions which you know, we address in the, in the book, in, the, in this, yeah, commercial, in the uh, Socialism Today and in the uh, newspaper, The Socialist, is why did this massive uh, insurrectionary general strike develop in a matter of weeks, you know, in a matter of really two weeks, as Dadu has explained, this massive insurrectionary general strike, the, bit, the most significant strike in history, even though in Italy later there were 12 million, 20 million on strike certain days, and that movement went on 
from before 68 until way into the 70s. But why in France did it come to the point where, as Dadu explained, the head of state, a very powerful, a general at the head of a Bonapartist military, police state really, with a thin veneer of parliamentary democracy, how come that government was suspended? In fact, the, uh, the, the, the head of state actually left the country and um, uh, he said to the ambassador, it's the Sunday Times, or, as he says, so it must be right, but it is because it was repeated in other newspapers, but to De Gaulle said, as for the future, it depends not on us, it depends on God. De Gaulle yesterday, that was the 25th of May, when, most importantly, um, the workers in the factories, in the main factories who'd been, uh, who were the heavy battalions of this movement, as, as uh, Niall just said about the working class being the key, uh, the key um, factor for changing society and for conducting a general strike, which in this case, as um, Badu said, posed the question of power very, very sharply. The, the workers in the factories of Renault, Citroën, big factories where the workers have been drawn in from, uh, from the immigrants from North Africa, the workers who worked on the, in the countryside have been drawn into these big factories. And it was a bit what the French ruling class never really wanted to do. They didn't want to industrialize. They didn't want to create their own grave diggers, as Marx had explained. But there they had to, because of the competitive situation after the Second World War. They industrialized massively. And that's why it was like, it was like Russia, the conditions that brought about the Russian Revolution. Only in the, in the heart of Europe, in a modern um, industrialized country in the heart of Europe, with a massive working class. And why? Did they reject the agreement which was made after two nights and three days of negotiations? Why did they reject the agreement when Segi, you probably, maybe you met Segi, George Segi, because he was the leader of the CGT at that time, at Epoch, as they say. And uh, he went to the Renault factory with this huge list of uh, concessions that they got from a ruling class which had really, many of the bosses had been locked up in there in the offices, in their factories, uh, the government who was powerless. De Gaulle couldn't even carry through his referendum that he wanted to do, a little bit of something about participation. He felt people might want to participate in running their society. He wanted, um, he wanted to carry through a referendum, but he couldn't get any printers to print it in, in uh, France. He couldn't get any printers in southern England where he tried to get the contract done. They wouldn't do it. Out of solidarity with the French workers, the Belgian workers wouldn't printed, you couldn't do it. And then the Constitutional Court decided, well, it was not constitutional anyway, just to save his face a bit, but didn't save his face. That government was suspended in midair, was irrelevant. De Gaulle was irrelevant. The Evening Standard carried, carried articles which said, you know, th this, this government has sort of been brought to dust. Even reaction couldn't organize. They got 2,000 people of Occident and the, in the streets of Paris. Later, when De Gaulle came back, it was maybe half a million a million reactionaries like the BNP that had just got in in London and crawled out of the woodwork and because the goal was back in the saddle. But why did the workers reject this huge list of reforms? The shorter working week, longer holidays, uh, a, a big increase in the minimum wage, uh, better maternity leave, a whole list um, in the book. I don't remember all of them now, but massive, massive reforms which only a revolutionary uh, upsurge could have uh, could have dragged out of the employers and the government. Why did they reject it if that's all they were interested in? Why? That's the real question. I mean, what time to hear your answer bit later on? Precisely because the workers felt, as Daddy said at the end, they felt they needed something else. It wasn't just a question of bread and butter of, of economic reforms. It was political, and the Communist Party leaders kept saying, like the leaders of the trade union movement in Britain in 1926 said, oh, it's not political. But all of the bourgeois commentators, the capitalist commentators were saying it is political. The government is in danger. You know, it could be overthrown. In fact, it would have just taken, and now we've got people coming from the next section. Um, your people, um, you know, all that was missing, you had a revolutionary situation. You had the ruling class split. They didn't know whether to use repression, smash the heads of the, of the students and uh, use the police against the occupations of the factories, which they couldn't do. They couldn't do until after uh, 
well, until after 27th, after the Gaulle came back to France, um, they were divided. The forces of the state were in re revolt. The police even went on strike, some of them. The, um, there, were, there were mutinies in the navy, uh, and there were uh, the conscripts in the army, especially, who were saying they wouldn't move again. They would, they, would, they would refuse to be used against the workers who were occupying the factories. The second element is the middle class. I don't have time to go through it all. It's sort of the classic four factors for a successful revolution, which uh, Vladimir Lenin outlined, and we, you know, we're still uh, genuine Leninists and socialists. But the second factor is the middle class should be moving. It can vacillate, but it moved to the side of the working class. Well, it didn't just move to support them. It was involved in the in the. There were magistrates decided to go on strike and, and discuss whether they had a role in a future society. Architects, um, the Cannes Film Festival was closed. Every layer in society was involved. And, that, and, that was, uh, and then that, and the working class, the third factor, the working class moving en masse, uh, prepared to fight to the end. I think that's clear because they wanted to fight to the end after Segi took these, these reforms. To not only that factory, in every factory they were rejected. They wanted something else. They were prepared to fight to the end. But the fourth factor, the Revolutionary Party was not there. The Communists certainly, they didn't want, uh, they didn't want to even try and get rid of De Gaulle, really, although that might have been quite nice. But they didn't want to go for socialism. They didn't want to upset the apple cart that would have upset those who were in power in the Soviet Union. Because if workers could take power in, in France, they could, they could overthrow the bureaucracy in the Soviet Union. But um, they didn't want to do it. There were Trotskyists, there were those people that Dadu referred to around the League Communist Revolutionnaire of today, but then um, they had the right ideas of linking up the action committees, uh, making sure they were properly elected, like the Soviets of the Russian Revolution. They had the right ideas, but <laughs> nobody had really heard of them before because they'd been looking in the wrong direction. They were looking at the colonial revolution, they were looking at the students who they thought could detonate revolutions everywhere. I mean, why didn't they? detonated revolution in Germany. The student movement was far greater in Germany. Why didn't they detonate this kind of movement in, uh, in Italy or in other countries where they're on the move? It was in France where they came together with the workers in spite of what the comrades here said about the big barriers that the communists did not want the workers to discuss with the Trotskyists. And actually, it was too late for them to really form a revolution party. There were other parties who gained massively in the course of this um, these events and in the election. We don't have time to go into why, why on earth, how on earth could De Gaulle actually come back, dissolve the assembly, the work, then chase the workers out of the factories, win an election with an extra one million votes that were lost by the Communist Party to him. Or if you want to talk about law and order, then the, 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 the Gaullists of the party of law and order, let's vote for them, the middle classes probably did that. Young um, workers didn't have a vote, and um, and uh, but the PSU, a small socialist party, actually gained in votes massively, 400,000, because they had been putting forward the ideas of taking this uh, this revolutionary movement to a conclusion. But the Trotskyists again had turned their back on the on the election and boycotted the election. They didn't uh, follow it through to a conclusion. So uh, there's there's much more. To say much more to read about, you can uh, read all about it in the three publications which I mentioned. But just to put just, just the last two words for those who have joined us now is that could it happen? We believe it definitely could have happened then with the Revolution Party. Could it happen again? Today we have a recession, not a boom. But there are movements, general strike movements developing in a whole number of countries. The lycée students in France, the school, secondary school students, have, have identified with May 68. A lot of them were there, luckily, you know, a week ago discussing lycée students. And, and, and they said, in April, they said, May has come a month too early. Well, maybe it'll come in June, July, August. There's a general strike on the 15th of, of May this, this month, this, next week, this week, next week on the 22nd or so of public and private sector workers. If they, uh, if they link up, um, then, you know, then the ruling classes can begin to shake again. If it, 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 might not, it might not be France where it blows up first. 
It might be here. Look, they've, you know, you've got all these reactionaries. You've got Boris. I mean, he could go too far. There's already been demonstrations against the BMP, the big demonstrations against him. And, uh, you know, the whip of the counter-revolution can start a revolution here, there, and everywhere. I'm sorry, <laughs> comrades. We've got another meeting starting here.